President Cyril Ramaphosa says a fight against corruption should be intensified and institutions set up to deal uh, with uh, what must be the work they should be allowed to do. He was uh, speaking after meeting his Malawian counterpart, Lazarus Chakwere. Uh, President Chakwere emphasized that leaders on the continent should allow the judiciary to do its work without fear or favor. The two leaders also discussed trade relations as well as what's happening in northern Mozambique. This as the United Nations calls for urgent measures to protect civilians in Cabo Delgado province. Mr. President, oh, my brother, my brother. Oh, no pomp and ceremony as countries learn to adapt to the new normal. Wow. And they soon held bilateral talks behind closed doors. Later, they joined the delegations to continue with the work, both countries committing to play their part in strengthening trade relations. And for trade and economy to flourish, leaders agreed that corruption is a cancer that deprives countries to realize their full potential. We stand firm against corruption as a government and we believe that we need to strengthen institutions that have been set up to fight corruption and to enforce the rule of law. And as heads of state, we should be in full support of processes as well as institutions that have been appointed to fight corruption. And we should do so without any form of interference because those institutions should be independent, they should be able to do their work without any favor, any prejudice, and any form of interference. We must, for example, strengthen the Anti-Corruption Bureau. We must uh, strengthen, you know, Financial Intelligence Authority and other such institutions. Even the judiciary must be able to act independently. The president must never be seen to interfere in their operations. That way, we can stump out this cancer amongst us because it has cost our peoples so much. Instead of us uh, thriving, we are barely surviving when we have so much that we can use to serve our peoples with. On global issues, they both responded to their country's policies on Israel-Palestine question with South Africa emphasizing its own position of two-state solution, saying Palestine has a right to self-determination, but Malawi trying to maintain a balance between Palestine and Israel. After it was criticized for taking a decision to open an embassy in Jerusalem. All peoples in the world to be free and to also have self-determination to be able to determine their own future, their own destiny. That is still something that the Palestinians do not enjoy. And we will remain supporting the struggle of the Palestinians. And we will articulate this position at every public fora that we have until the Palestinians win their own struggle. Because we were also in struggle struggling to achieve our own freedom and uh, we are therefore duty bound to support those peoples in the world who are struggling for freedom and for self-determination. We can have offices either side but uh, the point being this we support the freedom of every nation on planet earth of every people whether it be people group, they need the freedom which is their birthright. And we will continue to speak with the assurance that as people, we can talk to each other, we can understand one another, and we can come to a place where we, through that dialogue and contact, establish long-lasting solutions to what faces all of us as humanity. So. This was nothing to do with going contrary to any resolution. It was a matter of expression in terms of relations that's already there.
President Ramaphosa called on Malawian president as the incoming chair of SADC to pull the region together to assist Mozambique in dealing with the security matter. As a, a sister country in SADC, we're in support of the rule of law in Mozambique, we're in support of the people of Mozambique, and SADC itself is seized with this matter and we'll be discussing this matter uh, in the coming days and uh, I think uh, one should just leave it there because these are highly sensitive matters that are being done and discussed and uh, we should say that we support Mozambique uh, in all the challenges that it is facing at this point in time. The Malawian leader is expected to visit Zambia as part of his SADC tour. Sophie Mguin, SABC News, Pretoria. And our foreign editor, Sophie Mguin, uh, joins me now. A very good evening to you, Sophie. So it's been a while since we've seen uh, any uh, diplomatic, at least physically, of uh, leaders uh, conjoining to talk about issues. So a very important visit by the Malawian president. Yes, indeed, a very important uh, visit for the Malawian president at a time where SADC is battling with challenges of security in Mozambique. But uh, clearly he was here to kind of uh, uh, introduce himself to the president because you know that he has visited Zimbabwe, he has visited Tanzania, and now he's in South Africa and he will be going to uh, another country that is uh, 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 Namibia as well to ensure that he's able to strengthen the relations between the two countries. But let's take a listen at what President Ramaphosa had to say around the issues of COVID-19 and what the continent has achieved in terms of uh, dealing with this pandemic when he was talking to the, mini the, the, the president of Malawi. This pandemic has taught us that when we come together as African countries, we can overcome many difficulties. Solidarity and cooperation between African countries has in no small part enabled us to weather the worst effects of COVID-19. And it is around COVID-19 that we have as a continent really distinguished ourselves as a continent that acts in solidarity, a continent that has a clear strategy. And I do hope that uh, the world media is, will be able to recognize this because there is no other continent that has acted as one more than this African continent. The president talking about how the continent has handled the COVID-19, you know there are questions that are being asked every day in terms of how did we manage to ensure that uh, the death rate and also the infections are not as high as it was reported in Asia, in Europe and currently in the United States of America and Europe. The numbers growing in terms of the infections but also people being admitted in hospitals and therefore the president saying that uh, uh, the globe can learn a thing or two from Africa and this issue was also raised by the uh, director general of the WHO and also the director of the WHO Mike Ryan saying Dr. Ryan saying that uh, he has learned a lot from Africa in terms of how Africa has handled this pandemic because we have experience we had to fight Ebola and were able to win a war against Ebola and therefore we were able to revive all the structures that were there in terms of dealing with Ebola and therefore it is easy for us to continue in that way to ensure that particularly the communities are involved. So married issues coming out of uh, that engagement uh, you mentioned earlier on in that report the issue of uh, corruption and trade what other key issues uh, came up from the Malawian president? Well the Malawian president was quite frank in terms of uh, uh, his request to President Ramaphosa issues revolved around migration and immigration you know it is a very thorny issue you know uh, at times uh, citizens of South Africa are complaining that uh, 
uh, the uh, a fight you know we we are experience a fight for resources because many south africans are also struggling and therefore having our fellow counterparts uh, sometimes uh, we feel that as, a, as south africa that uh, perhaps some of the jobs or whatever is being done to survive could have been uh, something that south africans could do but unfortunately, we have to share these resources with people that we are hosting. Let's take a listen at what the president of Malawi had to say about issues of migration and immigration. Your Excellency, with your indulgence, if I were to humbly ask anything of you, it would be your consideration of a few matters of national and human interest. To begin with, I wish to ask that you allow the special permits be issued to Malawian migrants employed in the informal sector, just as is the case with Zimbabwe and Lesotho. In the same vein, I've asked that Malawians be allowed to apply for new permits and renew expired ones while in South Africa as a reciprocal arrangement. More broadly, I request your help in simplifying visa extension procedures. Mm -hmm. If you do not mind my Forwardness, Your Excellency. <laughs> I'm also wondering if uh, the period of detention of Malawian deportees at the Lindela camp can be reduced because uh, they are there 120 days. And uh, even if we say reduce it to 60 days, sometimes that's too many days um, uh, to ease the toll, the time. Uh, in the camp takes on the people there mm -hmm. as a first step towards the ultimate ideal of a detention period of no more than less uh, seven days, subject to consultations over the next few years. Mm -hmm. My third request has to do with the possibility of easing the insurance of medical visas to Malawian diplomatic passport holders. Unlike the current arrangement where they are required to obtain a, an ordinary visa because uh, before acquiring a medical visa. And uh, when people uh, seek help here, and thank God you have been our help in, you know, in time of need, uh, many times it's a desperate mm -hmm. issue of trying to get them the best medical we have in, uh, in the region. And so when these things drag and then um, uh, sometimes conditions deteriorate and then uh, we have increased human suffering. Mm -hmm. A lot to discuss, Tepiso, but also what I noted uh, uh, during the media briefing, I was able to pose a question around the uh, Middle East policy because we saw reports that the Malawian president has decided to open an embassy at Jerusalem. Quite a controversial move, as you are aware that the AU position and the SADC position is to stand with the uh, Palestinians because of uh, uh, their uh, fight for self-determination and therefore you could hear that South Africa is clear, is firm. Uh, this position dates back to exile years before 1994, even during uh, the founding father of democracy, Nelson Mandela, that uh, South Africa stands with the Palestinian people. And therefore there was no way South Africa will approve an embassy in Jerusalem because it's still a thorny issue and it is still being contested while Malawi has taken a decision to open an embassy, the first African country to open an embassy in, uh, in, in, in Jerusalem, a very controversial move. Mm. Uh, and now let's move on to uh, concern that's been raised by the United Nations Secretary General through his office to conflicts Mozambique and Ethiopia. I'd like to start with uh, the allegations of uh, beheadings and uh, beatings of civilians in the northern part of Mozambique. What do we know of what's happening there now? Well, apparently the atrocities are continuing and therefore uh, the president earlier on indicated that uh, uh, he is going to ask the Malawian president, that's what he did in fact, uh, as an incoming chair of SADC to ensure that uh, the region takes a firm position on this matter but refusing to divulge the strategy because it is indeed a very difficult matter but also giving an indication that we are likely to have a special session of SADC, Troika, perhaps discussing this matter.
Mm. And just the latest on situation in Ethiopia, as I mentioned, the UN Secretary General uh, raising concerns about possible war crimes being concerned there. And there are reports of thousands of Ethiopians who are running away from the Tigray region to uh, the Sudan. How bad is the conflict? Well, uh, in terms of the conflict there, it's quite bad because people have died, both sides, and therefore it is a humanitarian crisis. As you have indicated, many Ethiopians in that region have fled to Sudan. And you know Sudan itself, it's not such a stable country, even though there is an interim government. But you can't really guarantee that uh, uh, they can be able to host refugees because they also have their own processes that they have embarked on to try and find a solution to issues that uh, affected that country in terms of peace and security and therefore it becomes a problem not only to Sudan but the entire Horn of Africa. But I must also say that you know that even in South Africa we have so many Ethiopians and therefore it, 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 it doesn't mean that they are going to end in the Horn of, of Africa only. They are likely to come down here and they may even as well go to the north and try to go overseas and end up perishing in the Mediterranean. Mediterranean Sea and therefore it is important for SADC, for, for, for the AU in particular, IGAT, uh, the, the, the Horn of Africa, to work together to resolve this matter and uh, the United Nations has already issued a word that the uh, international community must intervene and therefore we are hoping that uh, we will hear more international uh, uh, organizations saying that they will assist particularly the humanitarian crisis. SABC Foreign Editor Sofumukwenda, thank you very much. And on that, the Ethiopian government has appointed a CEO. To